So I'm not really shooting a video today per se. Uh, we'll add this footage to the beginning of whatever the next video is and uh, let y'all see this. But for my longtime supporters, this would have been thinned uh, about this time last year, if y'all remember. Um, this is still back when we had Brady running the cutter for us. I was running mostly down rows for Brady. Uh, we were hopping Matt back and forth between loader, skidder, and uh, Mickey was doing a lot of the load, and I was doing a lot of help on the loader as well. Uh, this was our set for a first thinning patch. I'm gonna try and find some videos and link them down below in the description. And if I forget, hopefully I have some uh, trusty loyal viewers that will go down below and post them in the comment section. Like I said, I wanna say this is somewhere between March and April of uh, 2020 we were here actually i want to say it was march because march is when uh the covid stuff hit and i'm gonna stop up there and show y'all the next spot but we were up there and uh that was the track we was working up, up here on the left when when the covid stuff hit and they shut us down in the middle of the week and shut all the meals down and all the covid uh protocol stuff went into effect up here but this was our first thinning spot y'all can see that timber standing over there the crew that come in here and clear cut this, they still have to come in there and finish that. That's the second thinning patch. It was first thinning, second thinning, uh, then another patch of second thinning, then down the road with some first thinning, and then over here with some first thinning. And what y'all see left, that little strip, and then that really thick strip, that's second thinning that they didn't clear cut uh, when they were here. Uh, and if y'all remember, if y'all go back to the, like I said, you go back to the videos when we were here, um, we were that spot in there got really really wet on us and and that's the reason they left that is it got really really wet on them down there but it is just mind-blowing i think we were in here for like three months thinning this everything you see from that tree line down there we thinned and all this back here behind us that is a uh habitat i forget the technical word for it basically it's it's a it's a wildlife habitat protection spot uh, they had the little cock-headed woodpecker, little old brown woodpecker. He's, he's about yay big or so. Little old bitty feller. Uh, he was living in there. There was several of them, I think, but I don't think after the hurricane they made it or something like that. Maybe they, they migrated on somewhere else. But everything you see clear-cut, we thinned it, and Hurricane Laura destroyed it. Thousands and upon thousands and thousands of dollars in in uh investment for timber companies and all the hard work that we put into it to um to thin it correctly and make sure it was going to grow right laura took it away in a few hours this was our uh our second thinning set that we had here if y'all will remember or hopefully y'all will go down below and find the video links and uh, see what we had here. We had both loaders set up right here. Actually, I think the loaders were a little bit further down. That looks like one of their clear cut sets. But we had daylighted this road. Yeah, our, our set was a little bit further down right here. Or was it back there on the corner? I can't remember. Somewhere right in here we had a, a, a second thinning set. And it went way back up in there. Put all the window down so y'all can see better. But we went way back up in there, thinning. Which all of that actually come out to another road. Pretty positive we did not have a set right here. We may have. Pretty sure this is where they had their clear cut set. It's been so long ago I can't remember. But we daylighted all this roadside. If I remember right, it is exactly one mile from the crossroads to that other road back here I showed y'all that we stopped thinning at, that we thinned everything on the right side for one mile, and I forget how many, how far deep, I want to say it was another half mile deep, maybe three quarters of a mile deep, 
if y'all remember the the spot where we had the uh, the rutting beside the road this is it this is where it was really wet this is all that stuff that was left um, this is where Brady was cutting for me where we this is a spot right here we were watching Brady cut down beside the road cutting the big trees he was cutting the big trees off the side of the road uh, this stuff here actually went to this set up here and then all of this zoom y'all out there we go all of this here behind us and all over here we actually had a set right here uh, this was the set that I'm if I'm remembering right this was our set that uh, we got all the COVID stuff this is where they called out on a Wednesday at noon and shut us down instantly and then all the meals went into COVID protocol stuff uh, somewhere right out in here is where I shot the video where we uh, sprayed the machine down with a uh, starting fluid or brake parts cleaner we went all back up in there first thinning I mean everything y'all see that's open and clear cut we we done it it is just crazy to see everything gone like it is all this over here was second thinning and then over here this was all first thinning we were in this set for quite some time right here you can see it went quite a ways back up in there over here was where we had worked beside uh, the watermelon patch watermelon field this was the little old bitty narrow strip but it's just mind-boggling to see all of this I mean it's just gone every bit of it is gone it's crazy just plum craziness and you'll look back across there and this hill over here was our second thin inside that we were doing not sure if y'all can see the mat trailer up there yet but we thinned everything that's clear cut all the way to the mat trailer up there those trees you see standing over there them old scrub oak trees they were uh that's on the edge of a watermelon field they grew watermelon they still grow them out there we went all back down in there this is where we, i mean it was some decent wood I'm trying to remember some highlights that happened out there i can't really remember much had an smz start right out there in the middle kind of right out in there long narrow strip run down beside the road and this here was I won't say this was like 50 acres or so second thing in that we done surely y'all should be able to see the mat trailer up there by now I can't see on the screen what y'all can or cannot see but the uh, where the mat trailer is right here we thinned all the way up to it and down this road ah, shoot I won't say it was it was over a quarter maybe like a quarter and a half when I say quarters half stuff like that I'm talking quarter miles half miles stuff like that this is where we shot the video this is the crossroads where we shot the video where I showed y'all how they had just clear cut this and they had just planted it last year showing you how that worked because we had a a, a spot right here that was clear cut and they literally had just planted the trees last winter then you had this patch right here that was probably clear cut four, three, four years ago, five at the very most. You had a patch that they had literally just clear cut a few weeks before. And then they had this patch right here where the mat trailer is to the right that they were that we were thinning. And uh, I was explaining how the planting process and the re regeneration process in the forestry industry works. So anyway. This was clear cut before the hurricane. On to the next video piece.
one thing about it, there's plenty of bushes out here. Make a good map. <laughs> Y'all look up that little hill right there. Michael's been building his access. So and there's yopons everywhere down here. He got a solid trash map built out of nothing but yopon bushes. <laughs> Y'all watch this sucker coming up this down row here. I'm not sure how well y'all are gonna be able to see because I'm gonna have to move eventually. You see him stomped right there. I don't like that. That will blow out a tire. Y'all look at how big a drag he got behind that thing. That is a 748 pulling drags like that. Oh, he dropped two. Doggone it. He's wooded. There ain't no maybe so. He is wooded like no tomorrow. He lost them too. I bet y'all that's real close to a half a load of wood right there going up. I bet you he could bring another drag and they would... They'd probably load the truck with that drag and one more. This is the downside though to pulling big drags. Y'all see how it uh... How he's got some scattered and he's got... This, this here, that's not two pieces, that's one piece that's forked. But you got this piece here that slid, and then there's another piece up there that slid out on him. That's the only downside to getting great big drags is when you're doing that, you, you're taking a chance on dropping a few on your way out. That's probably what those three up there from is, is uh, ones that he's dropped. Show y'all a little, uh, here's the outlook on the, the canopy here. So back over here is where he hasn't thinned. Back over here is where he has thinned. Y'all see how everything's opened up? Y'all remember if I, if y'all remember, if y'all will remember, see if we can move over here out of Michael's way. Uh, when we started this track, I told y'all we was not shooting for a particular basal area. So we're we're actually running. Uh, with what's being left down here with the saw timber, I mean, you can see everything is just pretty saw timber, and they're going they're not going to touch it for a minimum of three years. Maybe they'll they'll clear cut it on the fourth year, but it may get clear cut on the third year, depending on how well it's growing. But it is growing exceptionally well, uh, or will be growing exceptionally well in three more years, especially us getting all this junk out underneath it and unchoking it. it it's just going to take off like like wildfire weeds now. But y'all see how nice the, t the canopy is open back up versus what it is over here. Y'all can see there's just, there's plenty of trees that are just smaller, kind of like that one right there. There's some bushy stuff. It's really suppressing, or not just suppressing, but taking uh, nutrients and sunlight from these big pretty nice straight log trees that are left standing uh, Typically when we're doing a second thin which this is a third thin we're pulling it back to a 70 basal area, but this stuff here uh, With as big as the timber is and it being a third thin and we're just here to get the pulp wood only uh, Like right here. We ain't cut nothing out of right here. Uh, this is just where he went in there and mowed down some bushes and stuff looking around the only tree cut from right here was This one. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing my My screen this one right there. I'm having a hard time seeing my screen. The Sun is really really bright but uh So we're not necessarily shooting for a 70 or 75 basal area in this stuff. We're shooting for uh, Just getting all the pulp wood out. So this particular area right here. We've got all the pulp wood out and you still have it uh, I would probably pull about a hundred basal area out of this. My, my Forester will he would probably pull a 90. So uh, either way, this is going to be a gravy clear cut for the clear cut crew that comes in behind us and gets to, to clear cut this. It is going to, this is going to be a money making track for somebody cutting logs here in the near future. One thing we've really been working on Matthew with here late, lately, since he's been running the rubber tire buncher a lot, especially in the second thing, and y'all are going to start seeing us use our, our rubber tire cutter a lot more often while it's dry. Uh, it's, cheap, it's cheaper to operate. But you see how this tree, these trees right here, they're, everything's nice and straight. 
Uh, Matthew had a really bad habit of fanning these tops out as he's cutting and we have to or we like to skid from the back to the front over our wood because it really helps knock a lot of the limbs off in the woods to where it helps accelerate the loader's processing uh, ability up. So with Matt getting in a, in a better uh, habit of keeping his trees straight in the row, it's really helping the skidder out and it's helping the loader out and it's in turn, it's boosting production at the end of the day. That is another big old drag of wood. Show y'all one thing real quick right here. This stuff, as big as it is, there's a lot of bobbing and weaving. Y'all saw how he stopped right there? You see how this tree over here to the side is stuck out a little bit? His skitter tires was going right here, which would have led him straight into that tree. and he had to stop and deviate the machine over so where typically our down rows are really just really symmetrical normally and you just haul butt down it you can't really do that in this stuff you're having to really take the time slow down and bob and weave a lot through this so it's, the skitter's having to slow down a little bit but i'm not complaining on that with the volume of wood that it is pulling out so this right here is another one of the really big obstacles we're running across in this stuff uh, as y'all know with the track cutter what this is this is a, a blown down tree from the hurricane it's actually uh, looks like it got clay rooted from a down row this is a down row middle there's a down row over there and then on the other side of it is another down row middle and this tree come out of that other down row middle but uh what matthew's gonna have to do here you can see some skint spots up there on it that's where Matt's done crawled over it going to the back. You cut from the back to the front with these big trees like this. It just keeps it neater and untangled is uh, easier for you. And uh, you don't work, block yourself out. But anyway, what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to back up in that other middle over there. Pick this tree up. Literally pick this tree up with the rubber tire buncher. And then lay it back down in that other down row over there. A little bit of a slower process with the rubber tire buncher. But so long as it's a piece or two here and there. It's okay. It's not really going to make that big a difference at the end of the day. If it goes to being a lot, then we have to start looking at using the track cutter to pick this stuff up because that rubber tire buncher really isn't designed to be picking this mess up off the ground. Well, Y'all can see here how he's got his pile started. Uh, everything's, all his butts are really nice and even. That's great. There's not a whole bunch of underbrush in his drag of wood. A lot of the underbrush that y'all are seeing at the loader is actually what is getting uh, picked up by the skitter there's there's no way of him not getting some of this stuff in the woods now in the wood some of it is the buncher operator I mean y'all can see it is a nightmare out here uh, the rubber tire is actually the better machine to be on to be trying to separate trash out because you can mow a lot of it down by bush hogging where with the track cutter you're just kind of swatting and, and and a lot of times you run out of places to knock and get it but uh, one of the things that, that you really want to watch for when you're running a buncher uh, rubber tire because once you throw these trees down like I was just explaining about that sideways tree right there these those bunchers are not made to pick this stuff back up uh, this tree I'm sure wasn't that far ahead when he threw it down because it's on top of those tops instead of the top speed on top of the butt uh, so this had to have slid with Michael but this, this tree being cattywampus like this makes it harder for the skitter to crawl up on this pile of wood and uh, it tangles the tops up too so then it makes it hard for the the loader operator to pick up I see something back here I'm gonna go show y'all but you know like I said we're really trying to focus on working with Matt right now and making sure our timber is thrown thrown straight in the down row instead of in or out or like this tree here throwed in we don't really want that. I missed it, but that, like I said, that tree must have just slid on Michael. Because what he just done is he took that grapple and he just slid it back. Just a little bit. He's probably going to pick up what I was going to show y'all. No, he's going to go on past it. Let's get down here. 
All right, so this is what I was talking about. You see how they're thrown over to the side? See how that one's thrown over to the side? That is not what we're looking for. It's actually, the, the timber is small enough right here, it's not really affecting Michael's bunching ability up with the skitter or crawling up on it, should I say. I don't know why I said bunching. But y'all watch those tongs. I mean, he's just skimming the dirt. Watch, he's gonna bury them this time because I said he's just, see, see how he just skims it? Well, y'all see how it still collects the trash with it? That's just, I mean, man, that's something unique to our area. Better back up here. Make sure we don't get slapped. Oh, some long, long trees. Oh, yeah, one slide out on him. But you see how these tops now, those tops that were thrown sideways, Michael hasn't been able to run any of those tops over. That's one of the things why we want those tops thrown straight and in the down row so Michael can come down here and run those tops over like what these have been. You see how there's no bushes or no bushy top left on this? This is what we're looking for. Now all these tops are gonna to be left right here or they're gonna bounce out and fall out on the way to the loader up there. So therefore you're gonna, you're not gonna have this much debris. There's gonna be less debris at the loader by running it over here. And those tops that were through sideways out through the woods those tops can't be run over so those those tops are going to be all that debris is going to be at the loader so therefore you're going to skid it to the loader and then you're going to have to skid it back to the woods by uh toting the trash away from the set so as many of you know i'm super super critical on our thinning application that we're that we apply to the job site especially in something like this um i expect a perfect job i was always do, doing the the per the the best job that i could of my of my ability i always tried to make my the best final product that i could leave behind that's what i always shot for sometimes i didn't always do a perfect job but that wasn't because i wasn't trying uh, that's one of the reasons it's hard for me to find a cutter operator to stay with me is because I, I push so hard on a cutter operator. I expect such perfection. I expect perfection out of the whole job, but the thinning application, if you get this wrong, you can cost your timber company and yourself, if you're buying and purchasing wood, you can cost yourself thousands of dollars in the long run, tens of thousands of dollars, lots of money. Hey, good job. That was a good throw. You see how he kind of held on to it till he knew he had his tops going in the direction he wanted? That was a good job. Y'all see what he's doing right there? I'm not sure if y'all can really see. Zoom in, maybe y'all can. But what he was doing is he was taking that head and he was rolling it on the side of one of those trees. The way you saw that tree kind of cattywampus a while ago, he was trying to make sure he did not have that happen with, the, uh, with that pile there. It's a, if you're learning to run a buncher, it is okay to cut a high stump or throw a tree crooked or make a mistake every once in a while like that. But what you have to be good at is fixing your mistakes. See how he holds that tree a little bit? He's trying to walk it in. There you go, good job. Now he's gonna lay her down. He held onto that one a little bit longer than I'd have liked to have seen. He used the head to run the butt up to where it's nice and even. I would like to see him get the butt a little bit closer to even as he threw it down. But I have to also remind myself a lot of times, I have basically 15 years of operating a buncher. And I didn't, Matt really doesn't have maybe a full year bunching with me. So there's a lot of things that Matt's doing right now that I was doing in my first year of bunching and I just don't remember those mistakes that I was making. I'm not saying I was perfect and I didn't make mistakes because I did make mistakes, but uh, I have to remind myself sometimes that, that Matt is still very green with the buncher. So there's lots of little things that I have to work with him on 
to get him to that perfection stage that I am looking for. So, so there's lots of little things that I do that I've learned over 15 years to, to, to make my selection look good, to make my stand look good as I'm done or as I'm working, um, and to make things more efficient for myself. Matt's still got to learn all those little things. So long as he continues to learn, and you know, it's not like you have to keep relearning him. Oh, you missed it. There you go. Oh, he's thawed out in it. He tried cutting down a little bit low. See, he can't really see because of those bushes. And he mowed down everything that he could, but he still, oh, I got y'all all cattywampus there. But he still couldn't see. He's trying to cut over a tree and not get bushes in it. These, these gums that are laid on the ground there, he's trying to cut over that. There you go, good job. Anyway, there's lots of little things that Matthew still has to learn, and it's gonna take years to learn those things. You don't learn those things overnight. And uh, sometimes I just gotta remind myself that, you know, we're teaching here, and um, so long as he keeps applying the methods that I'm teaching him, and I'm not having to reteach him something every day. Look, Michael missed a piece of wood right here, and he's coming back to get it. But uh, as long as he keeps making forward progress, and he don't go backwards, and he's always willing to learn and listen to what I'm trying to teach, I love teaching people how to do this stuff. Yeah, I get a satisfaction out of uh, learning people how to operate these machines and stuff. I guess I, uh, I've been very blessed to be, to have an occupation, a career that I find, that I'm so passionate about. Uh, I don't know why I decided I like logging, because man, it's, it's aggravating half the time, but I'm so glad that I, that I was, uh, able to have a job that that I, I actually I, I like I look forward to come to work there's so many people in this world that they hate their job or they hate going to work or they're just looking for something free and I just I can't live like that and like I said I'm just so blessed to have a, a an occupation here a career that uh, that I can be proud and and excited to come to work for every day. Y'all see how bad them bushes are? Like literally, he's 50 feet from us over there, and we can barely, barely see him through the bushes. But uh, I can stand down there and watch his cutter work all day. Cutting is my thing. I love cutting. I love listening to it. I love watching it. I love perfecting it. I love teaching it to people as long as they're willing to learn and have an open mind. And Matthew's very open-minded. So, it's a good thing to have in an employee. We're going to head back up there to the set. We're going to watch Mickey work for a little bit. We get up there. We got something, uh, we got something big to share with y'all at the end of this video here. And y'all are definitely going to want to be here for tomorrow's video. Crazy. I mean, he's literally right there, and y'all can barely, barely see. Him. We'll stand there and watch him make one more cut, cause I know he's gonna make. He's gonna cut this one tree right here. Y'all see where it does that, that whoopy whoop up there? He's fixing to cut it. We'll let y'all watch that. Good cut. Nice selection. Y'all look at old Turbo there, skidding all the wood. I think he cleaned like three or four sets today we got behind on for vacation stuff. Now he's caught his shear hand, and he's up there digging the dirt off the back of it, keeping it clean, making sure we don't get no pink lines and stuff. 
And that's top notch operator right there, y'all. All right, so hopefully uh, y'all can see Mickey and them working in the background and I'm kind of lit up or whatever uh, for the camera here. But I want to discuss with y'all something real quick. Today is a very big day for uh, me, my career, and everything else. This is the reason the Tiger Cat Skitter went home. This is uh, the reason why I got to be more careful with what I say on the YouTube channel. And this is the reason why if the... Uh, channel slows down some. This is why. Let me turn more this way. There we go. Maybe it'll. Maybe it'll do. There we go. Um. Today is my first day of being a business owner. The the job is 100% mine now. Everything, all the equipment, work truck. I mean 100%. Everything is mine. Um. I got a lot of help from my dad to get to this point. I got a lot of help from some other people to get to this point. And I'm very uh, appreciative and blessed to be able to have this opportunity because without those people uh, investing their money, uh, which I guess you'd say dad did invest some in a way, but there, there's been no cash flow, exchange hands, anything like that. But um, it's. It's an, I guess you say a bit of an emotional day. Um, on this, I guess you say a little insight to, to years ago. Um, 1982, my dad lost his mom in a car accident on, on today, uh, April the 5th, is the day I'm shooting this. And uh, I never met her or anything like that because I wasn't born until 88. Um, It's one of those things where where karma or universe just comes full circle for some people. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know what the words I'm looking for here, guys, are, but hopefully y'all can read between my lines here and everything like that and uh, understand where I'm coming from. I've worked 15 years to get this opportunity. Some people will tell you, Oh, your daddy just give you that and everything else. That's fine. It's cool. I don't have nothing to prove to nobody other than my bosses out here. And uh, if that's what people want to think, go right on ahead and think it. Because <laughs> even if he did give it to me, I'd have to have a level head on my shoulders enough to keep this sucker in in a uh, in business. And uh, and logging, you just have to have the refuse to lose attitude. And and that's what. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. We will succeed, and and uh, I will have a very, very profitable business. Um, or at least that's my goal. And if it does not work out, it won't be because of hard work and determination. Uh, next video, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do a little backstory on myself. There's a lot about me a lot of people don't know about. And uh, I would like to fill all of y'all in for coming along with me in my ride, being with me daily. There's a lot of y'all. Uh, I look forward to seeing your comments every day because of, you know, whatever. Uh, just we've, there's lots of y'all that I've, I've made a, a great acquaintances with uh, through this channel. And uh, we socialize daily. Uh, there's lots of people that I've met through their channels, through my channel and, and everything like that. And, and it's... It's uh, it's really cool to have all y'all along for the ride, and there's a lot of people that don't like the channel. There's a lot of people, as far as in in my line of business, they think that this is all for a show, for myself to look at me, look at me, look at me, and it's not. I, I honestly, I want to promote the the better of our industry and show the. The ups, the downs, the dynamic working environment that we face daily in and out as loggers and, and show y'all what we do to, to maintain the forest and promote future generations uh, of trees for future generations of people to harvest and enjoy and, and on and on and on such as that. Uh, you know, that y'all y'all know my story um, or y'all know my my purpose for this and, and there's lots of people that know it and understand it there's a lot of people that don't there's a lot of like I said there's a lot of people who think I do this 
just to get me attention. Um, I, I mean, I like meeting people and I like talking to people and, and I like some of the perks that come along with the channel, but uh, I don't have to do this to, to satisfy myself or whatever. It's, this, is, uh, this is purely educational for the public and long-winded. I know a lot of people probably done clicked off by now. The people that are still watching are my true supporters and everything like that. And I thank all y'all. Uh, I, I hope I can keep doing the channel like we've been doing. I hope we can continue uh, our our uh, our journey forward. I guess you'd say. Um, I don't see why we couldn't. I want to face y'all back in and let y'all watch Mickey work, but I can't because then y'all can't see me. Um, I guess that's a double standard on the uh, <laughs> uh, seeing me part, but I just felt like this is a personal part that I really need to connect with y'all on and uh, speak with y'all person to person, even though y'all are watching me through a computer screen and I'm talking to a camera here. But um, it, I almost give up on this because I didn't think it was going to happen. And uh, like I said, I'm. I'm beyond thankful to get this opportunity uh, we know no quit if that makes sense and I hope my the family that I have with me I even consider Matt family basically now and um, I hope everybody sticks with me and we continue to build this business into something that's uh, reputable so uh, Welcome to Cutting Edge Logging, guys. That's the new name of the company. And uh, I thank y'all so much for watching and hanging out every day with me. Until the next video, guys, make sure I go down below. Hit the like button, the subscribe button. Make sure y'all come back tomorrow because I'm going to do a set down video. It's going to be just more talking. I'm going to try and have things set up where y'all can watch something behind me work. But we're going to do some more, more talking tomorrow. There's some more stuff with me that I, I want y'all to hear. That I want everybody to, to, to listen to. There's got to be somebody else out there like me at that point that I was in my life. And um, I hope me sharing my story will motivate somebody else to continue chasing whatever they were set out doing. And uh, so anyway, guys, thank you guys so much. Till the next video. Video. We'll catch y'all next time. Right here.